Hello, welcome back. Okay, we've completed chapter 15. Um, in the local church is Zion, God's chosen people. <clears throat> uh, let's go to chapter 16 now. The local church is the vine and the branches. The vine and the branches. Okay. Um, John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. We've heard numerous stories, uh, sermons on those, this chapter. Let's, uh, let's read it. Romans chapter 15, uh, sorry, John chapter 15, verse 1 to 8. <clears throat> it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Okay. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, this is very important, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. <coughs> By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. You will be my disciples. Okay, um, so uh, what are some of the uh, significant points that kind of stands out to you from what we just read? Uh, okay, so the importance of abiding in, in Christ, okay. Whose relationship? Uh, importance of our relationship with God, okay, that stands out, all right. What else? We've just read through eight verses, isn't it? So, um, what stood out the most for you is what I'm asking. Right. Without him, we can do nothing. Okay, thank you for quoting the. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the important instruction to us in that is to abide in him okay so that stands out for you all right Nicole? it's important to be fruitful okay it's just it's not just saying the scriptures but if you read carefully it's just not saying be fruitful it's important to be more fruitful Okay, uh, yeah, and Anina has mentioned, um, apart from me, you can do nothing, yeah? So isn't it very interesting? You see uh, in verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, this is Jesus talking, right? He who abides in me and I in him. And then the imagery is changing. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Right? You remember that uh, scripture, I forget which one, it says, uh, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And who, he who keeps my commandments uh, will be loved by my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Well, if you obey my commandments, it's simply what? If you obey my word, isn't it? If you obey my laws, if you obey my precepts, my statutes, if you keep them, uh, that means if... The, in other words, if you abide by them, I will manifest myself to you. 
I really forget which verse that is. I read it again. <laughs> I told you I read it yesterday and I forgot. Um, right. It starts off by saying, verse one: "I am the true vine, not just vine. I am the true vine. The fa- the difference between the true truth and fact is truth is unchanging. Fact can change. Right? It it may rain today. It may not rain today. Weather forecast." Isn't it? So facts can change, but the truth does not. It is constant, right? He is the unchanging one. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? And that's why he says, "I am the true vine, the unchanging one, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, I makes uh, takes away." Uh, Nina, you saying something? No. Uh, no, no, sorry. Just that reference about manifesting. Uh, yes, they would manifest themselves if we keep right. the word. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, John uh, no. 21. And I'm gonna. I think that. so. <laughs> I just have to check it. Thank you. Okay. Um, now tell me some of the things about fruits. Um, what do you know about fruits? <laughs> The fruits have seeds. Yeah, guys. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, fruits have seeds. Okay. Really? Okay. What about? So, are you saying that there are no fruits that is available throughout the year? Mm. Okay. So, there's there we go. One characteristics of a fruit is it can be seasonal. Or, or it is continual, available throughout the season. It's a very important point for us to remember. Are we expected to be seasonal Christians or? Okay. Uh, what else? What do you know about fruits? Okay, fruits come from a tree. Okay, fruits. Are fruits always sweet? That's another question. So fruits can be sweet or bitter. So it can be what else? It can be either ripe or rotten. Yeah? Yeah, raw or ripe or ripe and rotten. So it can be raw, ripe, rotten, RR. <laughs> Okay. Right. So, from what little do we know about fruits? It can be seasonal or continual. Bananas are available throughout the year. Apples are available uh, through the year. And what else? There's so many other fruits. Yeah, I guess I, again, I'm not an expert in fruits. So I'm just, you know, trying to think of um, is tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Why was it a fruit? It's a general knowledge question. Okay. All right, Nina says a tree is recognized by its fruit. Yeah. Fruit shows what a tree is. If it's a good tree, a bad tree, whatever. Right. A tree is recognized by its fruit. Yeah, I, I think there's so much to uh, learn. I think again, from if you look at uh, from the time Bible days, they've they've used Peter uses so much of lang- uh, the language of an architect, so to speak, like buildings, sculptures, the cornerstone, chief cornerstone. Now, all of that is has a significance because uh, again, the Romans and the Greek uh, they gave a lot of importance to. In the, it, he's talking from their context, right? And then we see parables from the language of a farmer, farming and the tree and all of this. It, they all hold very, uh, very, very, very significant. And in this context, coming back to this, now un- understanding that the fruits can have all of these different characteristics. It can be raw, ripe, rotten. Uh, it can be seasonal or continual. Uh, it can be what sweet or sour or bitter, whatever. 
Um, so having understood all of that, when we look at this scripture in, in the light of that, um, verse 7, it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Verse 6, it says, if anyone does not abide, abide in me, he is cast out of, as a branch and is withered. And so it is possible that you can still bear fruit outside of him, but it depends on what kind of fruit that is. It's not going to be sweet. Right? It's not going to be a fruit that anybody desires to eat. It's not going to be very nice, basically. Right? In other words, it talks, and we'll just, uh, as we go on in this chapter, we'll look at, how, it talks about our character, and, you know, when we talk about the fruits of the Holy Spirit, etc. Okay. So we are designed to be fruitful, and God desires us to be very fruitful. <clears throat> to be fruitful is to manifest or express the life of the vine. So beautiful, isn't it? To be fruitful or full of fruit. That's what any word ending with the full means, isn't it? Wonderful is full of wonder. Merciful is full of mercy. Faithful is full of faith. Fruitful is full of fruit. <laughs> right? So all of us are to manifest according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 23. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those are what? Fruits of the Spirit. Yeah? Um, so it's not seasonal. It doesn't depend on, you know, uh, as long as we abide in Him and He abides in us. And, and, and that, that's the language of intimacy, isn't it? And John, according to John 14, 21, it says, if you keep my commandments, that means if you obey them. Obedience is the language of intimacy. We need to realize that. We need to know that. Okay? It's, which is better than sacrifice? Is he, is he pleased in burnt offerings? For obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says, isn't it? So obedience is the language of intimacy. And, uh, and if you've gone through the Gospel of John, Time and time again, we see that Jesus saying, the Son of God, he says, uh, my teachings are not my own. What I do are not the things that, uh, you know, are not my own. What I say are not my, you know, uh, is what the Father tells me to say. I go where the Father tells me to go. Jesus lived our last line of the declaration absolutely perfectly. The Son of God, he lived in absolute surrender. He could have easily said that, okay, these are my teachings. Why? Because I'm co-equal with God. I'm the son of God. But he understood his assignment so beautifully and all so humility, right? Uh, in Philippians chapter 2, we see that he humbled himself, made him nothing. Isn't it? And so uh, how much more should we live a life in, a, uh, in an absolute surrender? And I'm saying that in, in line with intimacy. Right, and uh, I would have mentioned this in first year intimacy. If you break it down, it simply stands for, yeah, into me. You see, because I show you, isn't it? And so, if you have an intimate relationship with a person, that you say that because I know the intimate parts of that person, the secrets that that person would not necessarily share with anybody else, uh, is willing to share with me because he, that person, he or she trusts me. Isn't it? And so God is saying that abide in me. There are things that I want to reveal to you that only which I can only show to you. And I have things in store for you. All you have to do is abide in me. And there are things that I want to show to you, things that I want to reveal to you. Right? And that leads to fruitfulness. All right, you guys okay? So 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 5 to 8 from your notes again, it says, uh, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Peter is just operating in a different level of wisdom, guys. Like, this is so good. Like, he is not talking like a fisherman. Isn't it? All right. You know, when uh, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say I am? 
uh, Peter says, you know, you are, you are the Christ, the Son of God, right? And then what does Jesus say? Flesh and blood is not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. Okay, so he's operating in a realm of revelation from the Father, uh, from the Holy Spirit. It, it's, just, it's just astonishing to see that, right? And just to see the series of words and the choice of words with so much wisdom, uh, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. That means be virtuous. Bible talks about a virtuous man and woman, right? What it is to be virtuous. And to virtue, add knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. Because knowledge without self-control can... Uh, <laughs> what's happening to a lot of young people these days is there's so much of knowledge available at your fingertips. Uh, everybody knows everything about everything. And it's not controlled. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Peter, for a long time, he was like that. You know, usually if you have a gun, what do you do? You are taught to aim and fire. Peter was more like fire and aim. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so it's saying, okay, so to your knowledge, at self control and to self control, persevere. You know, perseverance, to perseverance, add godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, add love. So, for if these things are yours and bound, you will neither you will be neither barren nor everybody's looking at that, right? You will either be neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if for if these things are yours and you're abound, and, and if you ab abound is what? Like overflow. I read this uh, quote very recently, a very simple quote. It says, you are not full unless you are overflowing. <laughs> you are not full unless you overflow. Right? Why do we pray, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit? Not just to the brim of it, but to overflow. Right? The river of God flows. It just does not stay in his temple. Right? And wherever the river flows, though it brought life. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so if these things are yours and abounds, you know, you exceed expectation, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful. Uh, that means you will not be seasonal. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So faith, virtue simply means character. <coughs> Character as as pastors and as leaders are very important. Um, and forgive me for quoting this old thing. I'm sure you you know this. Uh, un your anointing will take you up, but it is your character that will keep you up there. Right. Um, so you, we need to remember that uh, character is uh, is <laughs> it's very important to say the least. Your anointing will take you up. It may keep you. It may take you to places where you have not dreamt of or imagined. But it is your character that it will keep you there. And so that's what Peter is talking about. Faith, virtue, or character, a virtuous man or virtuous woman, uh, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. Kindness, uh, so again, the Greek was another word that was used in the Bible is do good. Do good. Uh, yeah, Hebrews 13, it says, offer spiritual sacrifices and thanksgiving. And it says, it goes on to say, while you're doing this, do not forget to do good. Psalm 37, verse 3 or verse 4, it says, uh, I mean, Psalm 37, verse 1 to 8, you will see these words repeated. It says, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, or it says, do not fret, etc., etc. It's saying all of this time and time again, but in the middle, it says, while you're not being afraid, Trust in the Lord and do good. That means trust in the Lord. While you're trusting in the Lord, be kind. Another word for kindness is generosity as well. Another way of, way of expressing kindness is you are being generous. And when I say generous, it's not just giving money. I mean, that's one of the things that we can relate to is like, well, thank you for your generosity. Someone donated so much money to a charity, etc., etc. 
uh, but I can be generous with my time, isn't it? I can be generous with my time to you. Time is very precious, priceless, isn't it? And so when it's saying all of this, uh, it's all coming under the fruits, guys. So faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly love, uh, kindness. And these are seven areas in which we need to keep on growing to be fruitful. Keep on growing. Uh, not be satisfied where, where we are at. Uh, there is more. I want to overflow. I want to ab abound in love, abound in self-control, etc., etc. All okay? So practical ways a local church can implement this. As a local church, we need to emphasize and focus on intimacy with Him. That is the answer to everything. Literally every problem in life or issue that we face or every challenge that we face, the, we need God. That's, that's <laughs> the answer lies there. It, uh, and it's found in Him, in His presence, with our intimate relationship with Him. As a local church, we need to check upon fruitfulness. The same way He checks upon us, we should not get busy with activity. It's a possibility, isn't it? We get too busy with ministry. We forget to check on the garden fruit, forget to prune it, uh, what's happening, is everything all healthy and good, etc., etc. Okay, I'm um, go through the remainder of the chapter. So again, uh, as a church, the local church, we are called to be the vine and the branches. We are called to abide in Him. Anything that is outside of Jesus is not going to last long. Okay, any doctrine, any theology that is outside of Jesus is not going to last long. In fact, according to verse 6 from, from uh, John 15, it says, If anyone does not abide uh, in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and they throw them into the fire. It's talking about judgment over there. Right? All good? Yeah, Francis. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next chapter, chapter 17, the lamp stand. <coughs> I had this small uh, menorah at home. I wanted to bring it and I forgot. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen that. that. Um, sorry? It's a metal one, yeah. It's a small one. Um, sorry? Yeah, but you can't light it. It's a very small thing, okay, so uh, it's beautiful. It's actually, my dad got it when he went to Israel. He, okay. <laughs> but, um, so again, we know the lampstand was first introduced uh, in the Tabernacle of Moses. Um, Tabernacle of Moses had outer courts, inner courts, uh, Holy of Holies. Um, in the outer courts, there were two pieces of furniture. What were they? Sofa and dining table. <laughs> <laughs> altar of sacrifice and a brain a, a brazen laver or bronze laver right so sacrifice was performed so as soon as you enter the, the tabernacle of moses it had a gate the gate was made of four different colors um saffron white and green no <laughs> the gate was made of four different colors scarlet red white, blue, and purple. All of that has significance, um, right? And then as you enter the outer court, you have the altar of sacrifice or bronze uh, altar of sacrifice. That's where the sacrifice was performed, uh, barbecue. And then there was bronze laver, or like a tub, which was inside, was made up of mirrors that women used. And then it was filled with water, okay? All of that has significance. And then you enter the uh, holy place or the inner courts. Inner courts had three pieces, table of showbread, lampstand, and then the altar of incense. Okay? So outside there was natural light, sunlight. Inside there was artificial light or lamp, the light that you got from the lampstand. Okay? It was the responsibility of the priest to make sure that there was oil always there in the lampstand and the wicks was always trimmed. Yeah, it always trimmed. Um, so if it's burning off, and so they need to trim it. 
uh, the point was they need to make sure that that fire was always there that there was always light burning it's quite amazing the responsibility right and so and that light and again um you know there's a replica of this um, the tabernacle of moses on youtube and all like in israel they've actually built one the way it looks and it's pretty dark inside without the light because again the covering was made up of skin right people you know, and so it was very thick so it's very it's not possible for light to penetrate and so without the light of the lamp stand priests cannot perform their duties in the inner courts making sure that the table uh, you know of shoe bread has bread we all know the importance of light isn't it um, so table of shoe bread uh, uh, signifies two things uh, a lot of things but uh, it's communion right bread and jesus is the bread of life we see that right and it's also fellowship there were 12 loaves of bread that was kept signifying the 12 tribes of israel uh, and it was replaced every 7 days okay uh, fresh loaves would be replaced uh, and then there was a the altar of incense uh, which signifies intercession of prayer and so coming down to all of this why is the lamp stand very important it was a place of illumination another word for illumination is revelation like with illumination you get revelation that you get to see it it's unveiling isn't it uh, and so without that illumination of the lamp stand uh, you can hardly see anything there's no revelation of what you want to do and so church is called to be the light yeah it's called to be light the lamp stand right and so without us uh without the lamp stand it's impossible to do the works of god other works of god as well okay well let's just look at it a little bit more um the local church as a lamp stand it says in the revelation that john receives he sees the lord jesus walking in the midst of the seven golden lamp stands revelation 1 12 13 and 20 let's read it then i turned to see the voice that spoke with me and having turned i saw seven golden lampstands and in the midst of the seven lampstands sun one like the son of man clothed with a garment down and the feet and girded about with a chest with a golden band the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches okay so the, angels or angelos means messenger so it's the same word that is used for uh an 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 angel of god and also the the leader of a church a messenger so how do we know that in this context is not in not the angel heavenly angels and it's the earthly human being because <clears throat> nowhere in the scripture we see that an angel was given leadership to lead a church when you read the whole context we need to understand it like that okay and so uh, when he talks about the uh, the angels of the seven churches it's talking about the in other words pastors or leaders or elders of that seven churches okay uh, one more scripture revelation 2 1 and 5 it says to the angel of the church of ephesus right these things say he who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the first works or else i will come and come to you and quickly and, and remove your lampstands from its place unless you repent okay one more thing that we need to uh, if you pay attention from chapter 2 to and end of chapter 3 all of these seven churches are mentioned and to all these seven letters jesus starts off by saying i have seen your works i see your work i see you it's there when you read through the book of revelation that means he is watching what the churches are doing okay and so what is the significance here that he he was watching back then he is not stopped watching now okay so he is watching right so and then 
says, so the local church uh, as a lampstand is to be the light. That's what we've been commanded in the world to illuminating hearts and minds so that they can come into a place of understanding. Um, where is it? We all know the scripture, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Um, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. Uh, but on a lampstand, it gives light to all who are in the house. Okay, so if you and I, as individuals and as a collective, are a lampstand, um, I know there's a lot of content here, but just pay attention, we'll finish pretty soon. When, if I'm the light of the world, and you know, people who are around me, if I'm shining the light of Jesus in and through me, um, I'm allowing them to see that he is the bread of life. Right? And I'm allowing them to see that Jesus is interceding for us. Are you with me? Because it is the golden lampstand that allowed the priest to perform the other duties. That the table of shoe bread and prayer, intercession, etc. Et and uh, in the scriptures we see that he is the bread of life. He is the light of the world. And he is our intercessor jesus is interceding for us and so if you and i as an individuals and as collective are the lamps and are the light called to do what he has called us to do uh, we allow people who don't know jesus to say that okay he is the light of the world he's the bread of life and he is interceding for us etc etc all good no we are to walk as people of the light do you know that uh walk Walk, 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 walk in the light. Walking in the light of the Lord. It's too old, Norin, for you. It's a great thing to praise the Lord. <laughs> you know the Sunday school song? Your walk talks and your talk talks. You know that? But your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Walk not in darkness as children of the night. Walk even as Jesus walked as children of the light. I heard that only once in sixth standard and I've never forgotten it. <laughs> right, let's come to a conclusion here um, by reading Philippians 2, 14 to 15. Do all things without complaining and disputing uh, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and a perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Okay, practical ways a local church can implement this. Maintain our first love, intimacy, so that our lampstand is burning strong in his presence. We then have the power to influence our world with his light. Our local church must provide illumination for God's people so that they can be in a place of understanding God's word, a place of communion, prayer and worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Encourage believers to live lives and do good works that will point people to the Lord and expose what is of darkness. Okay, all these points, once again, are very fundamental um, to a Christian life, to a Christian walk. Uh, intimacy is the key of everything. Uh, pursuing his presence is, is the secret, is key. Learning to host his presence, living a life aware of his presence uh, is simply the key. And knowing that he deserves all the glory, honor, power, and praise uh, is fundamental. Are you all with me? Yeah. So let's conclude in with chapter 18. Uh, you know, it just it's like a summary of everything what we've covered so far in section two. Uh, chapter 18 is just talking again using the example of the early church from the book of Acts and just simply saying how that church was the body of Christ, and as the body of Christ, they represented Christ powerfully in their world. As a family of God, they shared all things and supported one another. As a pillar of truth, they stood against the pressure of opposing traditions. As the army of God, they advanced forcefully and overthrew the works of darkness and released people and regions from demonic uh, domination. As the bride of Christ, they were deeply in love with their bridegroom, God. As a house of prayer and worship, they devoted themselves to pr powerful prayer, worship, and intercession. As the temple of God, they saw God's presence and glory manifested. As the people of God, 
talking about Zion, they lived radically different from the world around them. As the branches uh, of the true vine, they walked in intimacy and fruitfulness. As the lampstand set by God, they let their light shine in the midst of the darkness. Okay, uh, this is wonderful. We are, we are concluding section two. We, we are concluding uh, section two. We have one blueprint, 10 different perspectives. And as a leader, as a future leaders, senior pastors, founders, uh, ministry, uh, or just ordinary person, <laughs> uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. One way that you can gauge if your ministry is healthy is looking through these different windows, these different perspectives. Uh, it's and check. Okay, is is your ministry doing all right? Is the church doing all right? Uh, where is your church in this area of, of praise and worship? Where is your church in the area of intercession or as a bride? Uh, is there love is in the right place or uh, or et cetera, et cetera? Okay, all good. Okay, so with that we'll uh, we'll actually stop here. I think we've covered a lot of content for today. Francis is saying Amen. You can see it in his eyes. I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> He's like, oh, thank God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bottles were falling. iPad, iPads were iPads were falling. Everything was falling. It's like without the uh, anointing of the Lord, everything was falling in this place. <laughs> so those online, uh, I think it's uh, safe to stop now before they start falling <laughs> in the class. Uh, but thanks for joining in. I'll uh, see you again next week. Okay. God bless you. Thank you.